Thank you, Grande. Appreciate that. Um, I hope everyone is well, happy and healthy in what is a really interesting period of, of our lives. Um, and yeah, thank you for the invite as well. Um, I just wanted to start by saying um, I've been in your position. I've been in, in some of the people that are listening's position, you know, a person of color, someone that looks visibly very different um, from an impoverished background. I'm a son of a refugee. Um, so I empathize with you and I'm here to support you in any way I can. So I have a few slides that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'm assuming that you can see this. Um, so this is me, uh, age three. Uh, a very curious child. Um, my father, who was an aerospace engineer, used to take me to air shows and I would be fascinated with how these big objects would be in the sky. Um, and then I would come home, I would go into the cupboard and take out the toolbox and I would take apart appliances. And that used to really anger my mum uh, because I'd always break things. I would never be nav drop proof, you know? And um, um, I had two sisters, uh, so they always used to dress me up, always used to paint my nails, and we always used to um, play uh, games with each other. So I was really family orientated and very, a very curious child uh, from a very young age. Uh, my sense of community um, really grew when I joined Scouts. Uh, that's me in the middle there um, and my friends trying to pick me up. Um, and it really gave, gave me a sense of humanity, you know, that there's a higher purpose for me. There's, a, there's not just me in the world today. Um, and I really uh, credit kind of the lessons that Scouts have, have taught me uh, as a child. Um, my mum was obsessed with traveling, so uh, she used to collect stamps uh, from the newspapers and would go on caravan holidays. We weren't, um, didn't afford much, uh, but she wanted us to make sure that we um, uh, experienced the world. Um, and one of the most memorable travel experiences that I had was uh, going to Namibia, where um, looking back at it now, I, I feel like it's quite problematic, but at the time, you know, volunteering at an orphanage for a month uh, was an eye-opening experience for me um, and also to, to kind of problems of some of the issues that we came across, like uh, poor sanitation. Um, and this picture is an example of how a, an old abandoned swimming pool can be turned into a football pitch. So really thinking about out of the box and thinking of solutions uh, to help people. Uh, so studying engineering at university was a real natural transition for me. Uh, you know, that kind of problem solving mindset and always trying to see how things worked. And uh, this is a picture of me in, in the library of Queen Mary University. Um, me and my friends used to study here for 12 hours a day, um, um, day in and day out. Um, we actually used to sleep underneath the desks. And in this picture, you'll see the security guard um, taking away our, our stuff and we'd just turn up the next day and make sure that we're occupying the space to, to study. So it was play, playing can mouse with the security all the time. Um, and, uh, and just a very personal story very quickly. I actually failed my first year of engineering. Um, I wasn't focused uh, and I wasn't applying myself. Uh, but in my second and third years, I really surrounded myself with really beautiful people um, that really helped me through my engineering degree. Um, Ibuku and Shirinwa to the right of me here, a Nigerian international student, uh, really taught me the, the, uh, the importance of looking after each other and helping uh, each other through 
uh, our, our struggles of our, our, our degree. And, and you know what, I graduated. I actually graduated top of my class, I got a first. I still question uh, as to how that happened. I have no idea. But I had a lot of support from my, um, my seniors, my lecturers, and um, I won the award for most improved students at Queen Mary University at the time. And, and this lady was very proud, my mum. Uh, my dad died when I was a very young boy, and so she uh, has been my bedrock and my inspiration uh, from a young age. And it was very touch and go. We didn't know if I was going to pass. And so this graduation day was really, really important uh, as a celebration for, for me but, and, and my family. So what happened then is I was lucky enough to join the graduate program of one of the best technologies in, in the world. Dyson uh, and I thought my dreams came true in fact you know I was so happy uh, I was making products like these on a day-to-day -day basis I would meet James Dyson every couple of weeks to share my ideas with my wider team and I learned so much about making products um, about three years into my uh, graduate program I I realized, do you know what, Nav, everything, every good bit of engineering that you're doing is, is making a vacuum cleaner, is making a hairdryer. Every good bit of engineering that you're doing is giving a product to the middle class, to someone who already has it, you know, uh, and I wanted to do more. So you can imagine the conversation I had with my mum coming from a South Asian family uh, it was a very tough conversation. I wanted to quit my job um, and she was not supportive at all. I quit my job and I volunteered for Engineers Without Borders UK and we were making clean cook stove technology for people who use solid fuel. Uh, it's a big problem. Uh, um, you breathe in smoke and it causes chronic diseases. And so um, I with a team went out to South India uh, to make these cook stoves and from the very beginning we knew that you know people from disadvantaged backgrounds do not want poor quality goods they want good quality goods like everyone else and so that was our motto and we were really passionate about making really good quality goods we would test and test and test and test we would come up with an idea um, have it prototyped and in the field to be tested by people the very next day. And we do this every single day, day in, day out. And, you know, we learned that being closer to the consumer is very important. You know, a person doesn't want uh, their small um, pot uh, uh, to be burnt, for example. They don't want their food to be overcooked. So that really taught me that there is a need for these kinds of things. And we sold, we sold thousands of cook stoves uh, for people who use wood to cook their food. And, you know, we had the best food imaginable. I wish you were there. It was delicious and I still crave that food today. So what happened next? The, the most rewarding aspect of this is people like Rajni over here. Her husband died nine months prior to this picture, lost all income to the house, and a cook stove like this empowered her, um, saved her money, and was healthier for her. And so this was really important for me, the customer, the consumer. I lived in a very rural village in South India. That's where I uh, lived for one year. There was a lack of electricity and infrequent access to water. To the right of the screen here, you see a lady called Divya. Divya became a very good friend of mine. And Divya's suffering was really evident. She was a 30 something lady who 
what got married at the age of 17 and had kids uh, very early on. She spoke perfect English, but never used it since high school. She wanted to work, but didn't have enough time. And so she would, on her hands and knees, scrub each piece of cloth like this, as you can see here, every single day. She didn't have access to an electric washing machine. And so I promised her a manual washing machine. Her eyes lit up and said, Nav, I need this. I want this. Another picture of Divya is studying with Sugama, her seven-year-old son, who had an exam the next day, underneath uh, my cell phone flashlight. And these are really simple problems that we take for granted. And this needs to change. It's it's really frustrating for me to, to see suffering in a world like this that we take for granted. And I, as an engineer, have the skills and people like you have the interest to solve some of these problems. So in 2018, I started the washing machine project. We make manual washing machines that save time, water and effort for people like Divya. 70% of the world right now do not have access to an electric washing machine. Our beneficiary approach is in the heart of everything that we do. Even in our logo, you can see that people like Divya are at the center of everything that we do. And this is the problem. We traveled out to Somalia. Uh, and these are travelers uh, grabbing water where they can and washing their clothes. This is in northern Iraq, Kurdistan. Another woman Unfortunately, this burden is disproportionately affecting women on her hands and knees, scrubbing each piece of cloth. This is in India, where ladies are washing in lakes, where I've personally seen people defecating, showering, and wash dead bodies in. And this is in the Philippines. A six-month pregnant woman spending three hours a day washing her clothes. This is on the border of Syria in a camp in Lebanon. Again, no washing machines, uh, no dryers, causing mold to grow on clothes and causing diseases. And this here is Ali, a refugee who was the head of engineering of his company, overnight lost everything and became a mechanic on a refugee camp. He told us about how he fixes washing machines every single day because of their poor parts. So I created the manual washing machine using the insights on the travels. There's a large drum capacity and low water consumption. Everything that I've learned about beneficiary driven approach, keeping the user at the, end, at the center of everything that we do, went into this design. We've been featured in over 20 news outlets, and that's me on the BBC Red Sofa. We've partnered up with Oxfam and the United Nations and delivered over 50 of these washing machines to refugee camps. And we're looking for people like you that are willing to help us achieve our dreams. I'm gonna leave you with this thought. As young people, you are the next generation that is going to make change in this world. You are inheriting a planet that needs your help. Think of how you can help and please contact me for any support and advice. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wow, that was just incredibly inspirational. Um, I know how hard it is to leave a job at Dyson. It's not easy. <laughs> You know, how difficult it is to leave a job at Dyson, JLR, you know, we, we, we get so comfortable as human beings, you know, and for you to have made that leap, that decision, you know, um, same here, coming from, a, you know, I, I'd say Nigerian, African families are the same, right? You know, they inv your parents invest in you to get that cushy job somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, just incredibly. Um, you are a wonderful change maker. Thank you so much for what you do. And thank you for being extremely inspiring. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you.